To perform echo during a cardiac arrest, the subcostal view is the optimal view as it can provide useful information and is also easier to get than some of the other echo views. Either the phased array or abdominal probe can be used, remembering that the marker will face a different direction depending on which probe is used. Set the appropriate depth, which is usually around 20 centimeters. If this is set too low, you may waste valuable time readjusting this during the rhythm check. Remember, you want to minimize the amount of time where CPR is not ongoing. For that reason, it's worth placing the probe on during compressions so that you are ready to scan during the rhythm check when compressions stop. Here we can see the subcostal view in a healthy patient. We can identify all four chambers of the heart and can see the bright pericardium surrounding the heart. There are three key questions to answer when performing echo during a cardiac arrest. The first is, is there any cardiac activity present? Secondly, is there a pericardial effusion? And therefore this may suggest tamponade as the cause of the arrest. And thirdly, is the right ventricle enlarged, which could suggest a pulmonary embolism. So why is echo useful during a cardiac arrest? While pulse checks have shown to be unreliable, an alternative way of looking at the heart is therefore beneficial. Echo may change management in multiple ways, including identifying pathology causing the arrest, differentiating between asystole and very fine VF, and also differentiating between true and pseudo-PEA. So going back to the POCUS questions, the first question is, is there any cardiac activity present? The ALS algorithm would advise not to shock the patient if you're unsure whether asystole or very fine VF is present on the monitor. But with ultrasound, you may see the heart fibrillating and therefore should shock the patient. You may also be able to differentiate between true and pseudo PEA. In true PEA, there is no pulse and no cardiac activity. However, in pseudo PEA, there is no pulse, but there is some cardiac activity, just not enough to create a palpable pulse. The second POCUS question is, is there a pericardial effusion, as this could lead to cardiac tamponade. If this is present, this can be treated through pericardiocentesis. The third POCUS question is, is the right ventricle enlarged? If acute, this can represent a pulmonary embolism. However, it's important to remember that there are lots of other causes of right ventricular enlargement, and therefore this finding needs to be placed within the clinical context. In this video, taken from a patient in cardiac arrest, we can answer our three POCUS questions. Firstly, cardiac activity is present. However, the patient had no pulse during the rhythm check. This is therefore pseudo PEA. Secondly, there is no pericardial effusion, therefore we know that the cause of the arrest is not cardiac tamponade. Thirdly, the right ventricle is not enlarged, making a massive pulmonary embolism less likely as the cause of the arrest.